Thanks, Michelle, for the kind introduction. Jano, děkuju, that I'm here. Moje čeština nestačí pro tu prezentaci tady, but I think it's more appropriate to have it in English. And that's why, yes, I'm again after two years. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here in Prague again for this great grand conference. And as Michel already introduced me with the crystal balls, and many people ask me about the crystal balls, and I, I hope I can lift and open the secret here to it, to you. Well, how, how is, a, let's say, it's about future in food analysis and some remarks as well to future of Rafa. Yeah, that's from my point of view. And probably that may, may be interesting to you as well. So, um, how my, my presentation is, is structurized is, I've, well, metabolomics, uh, Michelle, you're right. So it will be about, about food domics and food metabolites that I will be talking about. And I will, uh, let's say, give you my philosophy or my part of philosophy about dark matter. It is, and then some concepts of predict prediction that I found when I had a view on, on some prediction or, or principles of prediction, and then at the end, the out outcome of the prediction where I will lift, let's say, the, the outcome of the crystal balls, probably. Let's have first, well, of course, then if you look about the future of food analysis, so some of us, or I would say many of us, will see foodomics as, as a part of the future in food analysis. And you, you agree um, with that has been, that term has been introduced by uh, Alejandro Sifuente, well, 10 years ago, and still it's still relevant. And um, about foodomics, we know, so I would, I would just um, define it as a holistic understanding of food quality and well, food integrity, let's call it this way now. And the food dome as well, the collection of all components that we need to know. Yeah. And for me, the question is, um, okay, so how much we already know of that and probably how, how many of them are unknown? So if you look, so my starting point was about, when I asked me this question was about, when we, look, we have been looking at, at non-targeted metabolomics and using some platforms of it. So my point, so whether, there are many platforms that you, can, you may use, and our starting point and our um, basic, basics was the FTI CRMS. I won't go into details of it, because for us it's, shows that much of mass uh, resolution. So for us, it's a good instrument here to, to look at the, at the metabolome here. And of course, you can use other, other uh, equipments and hyphenated systems. They are, uh, well, feasible as well. Well, we have been looking with the FTI CRMS on some fungi that are relevant, relevant for food and food, let's say, food contamination. And what we found in the metabolome, so this is sort of, um, let's say, the, the metabolome and the mass difference network of all metabolites, when, how they are correlated with each other. So there are some, some of these compounds are known already. So let's say whether this works. Yeah, so these, for example, these ones, so these are known alternaria metabolites. So, but the black ones, probably not known. So we have been looking at databases on all of these molecular formula that we found by FTR, ICRMS, and it was surprising, probably not that surprising, that only 20% of these molecular formula, which are really accurate, accurate formula, are only 20% of them are annotated in a, let's say, a, a current, current database, the CAC, which you may know. So only 20 or percent are really known. So that's for me some, some what is unknown, obviously, here. So 80% obviously are unknown. On the other hand, when we have been looking on those compounds that we found and that we found annotated in these databases, that meant that we would expect many of these primary metabolites, which you would expect to be present in the metabolome, because the fungi or this organism, they need them for just for existing, for living here. Yeah. And what was surprising to us um, with this instrument, that less than 50% of those that we would expect in the metabolome, we couldn't detect them. So less than 50%, that means here in this. So this is 
the gray bars are what we would expect here in this primary metabolism and the black bars are what we found. So obviously less than 50% were not detected by us, although I would expect it. So that was for me a second part of, let's say, dark matter or unknown, unknown. Let's go to categories of unknown food metabolites. So, that's, so you may well, really categorize them as what is really unknown or define that what is unknown. So and then my, let's say my last, for, well, two, two years ago at Rafa I presented this, this picture about the different dark matters in the iceberg or, or let's say below the iceberg, which means one first, uh, the first dark matter belongs uh, to the database, to the missing database entries. So what I have been showing you, so these database entries, they are missing. So that's why we found only 20% of the, of the metabolites. We can annotate them. On the other hand, sensitivity is missing. That's why we haven't, have seen only 50% of them um, that we would expect. So this is what's the background of it. And I have been thinking, okay, what is the limitation of this? And if you look at, so about first to think what is the metabolome and how big is, how many metabolites would you expect there? And there are many databases and many predictions of that. So one current prediction is from my, my friend, uh, Philip schmidt Koplin was about if you look at all possible, let's say, formula that can be calculated, you end up with, let's say, those numbers of 10 uh, to the power of 40, for example. Uh, you see that's not feasible for any, any type of instrument uh, and whether it's that makes sense is another, another question. So I was thinking, oh, this is not, not really to be handed. So I looked into the, the databases, um, metabolomics databases, and they, they, there are a lot of, lots of them. Um, and they are those numbers that you may probably know. So starting with PubChem, which means all man-made chemical components, about almost 100 million of them. Well, these are man-made chemicals. Do you expect them to be in food present? Well, not, not really, or to be relevant. So this is by far too many of them. So if you look then at METLIN, which is for a mass spectrometric database with metabolites, so it, it includes the metabolites, endogenous metabolites, but as well xenobiotica. So that means those one million Obviously, appear to me as well too many because well, that's not really to be handled here in that way. And if you go further, you one of one very interesting one is the the human metabolome database with about 100,000 of of metabolites. And I'll come later to this because why I took this as a basis. So in the end, my question was, what, how many metabolites do we expect here in in food? Yeah. So food, when you look at the components, so they come from plants, animals, and microbes. Well, first primary. So that would be if you collect those, how many of these metabolites will, may come from all these sources. So I had the estimates, okay, let's the human metabolome database, then some 200,000 of plant metabolites, for example. So you end up, which is my personal estimate, about 500,000 of relevant metabolites when I will exclude all xenobiotica here, yeah, so all contaminants in the first, because I won't see them as primary and process metabolites. So if you look at my reaction, for example, so that increases a lot. So just on originary food, not processed. So that should be my, let's say, my basis for the, for the uh, prediction. Right, if you look at <clears throat> this human me me metabolome database, over time about the entries, and there's a good, good uh, publication coming, uh, that came out last year is so that was the the development of the entries which looked like this way and uh, you, I already noticed here so that's kind of exponential behavior about this about the meta uh, the database entries and this exponential feature that that runs through many parts of many different developments. If you look, for example, an increase in sensitivity of some triple quad uh, mass spectrometry, so this is one, one manufacturer, I won't go too de into detail of the manufacturer, but if you look at this as, as well, an increase in time and some exponential behavior in this. 
If you like, look in the literature, you find about uh, TOF-MS uh, resolution, mass resolution uh, over time for here, yeah, for time of flight instruments, as well as some exponential behavior in this. So there is an increase in, in time, so which, which um, well, describes how, the, let's say, the, the, the equipment develops over time. Question, okay. What does that mean, and, and is this possible to take it as a as a uh, for for a prediction? So, for the concepts of prediction for food analysis, which now is where the the, the now following concepts that are cu currently submitted in a paper um, is. If you look back, and there are some examples for these exponential behaviors, look at Moore's law, it, which, which has been, uh, let's say, developed by Moore in, in, this, in the, let's say, 60s, 1960s, that the transistors that double every two years, so the expansion, exponential behavior in the development of computing power here. And this has been, let's say, um, well, projected further by Kurzweil. Kurzmal is a uh, philosopher, philosopher and as a uh, well, uh, future future scientist here, and he developed the law of accelerate, accelerated returns in 1991. So as well, computing power here so decreases exponentially here over time, and so this is probably where this was uh, 2020, probably maybe here, and look at when, what he is predicting in 2045. That means, well, I can, hardly can read it, so it means that the, uh, the power, the power of, of technology will really um, then be bigger or, or stronger than all human brains on Earth, that means. So this is the prediction of, of Kurzweil. In 2045, what he calls the technological singularity. So that means that the computers will be probably more intelligent than all humans then. And well, he says that will sol solve all problems on Earth. I'm not really that really clear that it's, this will, n that it won't give or uh, lead to further to other problems. But probably, well, we have to consider this, yeah, because we see this. So this exponential behavior is really, really present. So for me, it was the, the background of this exponential behavior. And when we look at these um, databases, means with the exponential behavior, and keep in mind those number of metabolites, 500,000, which would I expect. So that means if you project this um, in an exponentially behavior here to this 500,000, where would we end? So the current database, when will that reach the 500,000? Uh, no, well, metabolites will be somewhat here in 2025 means that means would, it, would be my prediction in 2025 we will know all metabolites that are present present in food so first first prediction of it um, which means that when you take this as the dark matter those compounds that we don't know yet the dark matter then will be open or will be clarified then in 2025 probably in this kind of behavior here exponential to here to this stage. So currently, keep in mind, 500,000 metabolites is, is this the background, 2025. About sensitivity, so about the second dark matter here, so which means um, when, when, when can we detect all metabolites here? So if we were pre, well, have the, this projection from the sensitivity increase over years, then you can end. So first is the question, what which sensitivity will we need here to cover the whole metabolome or the whole food, home, food metabolites, let it's that way, which means, well, in essence, you will need to detect just one molecule because one molecule can be bioactive. So we could discuss about that, but principle in principle, one, one molecule can react here. So that means we would need single molecule detection here with this say this uh, limit of detection is here this kind this small number if you and you can project that you can project that from the sensitivity of the triple quad which is a real nice exponential behavior here here down to this limit of detection so you end up here 
The point is, okay, you can't use a triple quad for non-targeted metabolomics. You will need at least a tough instrument, which I would assume could be a little bit less sensitive. So some manufacturers, well, probably they may kill me, but I, I would say so the non-target metabolics would be a little bit less sensitive. So if you project this here in this way, where would you end? And then in 2033. Yes, so that will be single, so my prediction, single, single molecule detection could be possible in that way. So, means, in the end, we got the second dark matter, which is the second dark matter is the detected, not detected metabolites, that dark matter would be open then in 2033. Well, that's not all, so we have them now, we know them. On the other hand, we have detect them, but we don't really know the real structure from that what we detected because if you detect it in a, let's say, a non-targeted method in a mass spectrometer, you can't really say that it's which kind of structure this molecule has. So the question, the last question is probably when are those structural assignments, when are the identified ones? And this one we could take as well from the, say, the uh, database, human metabolome database. This means because they have some entries about the identified metabolites here in it, which is rather, well, really flat increase here. So, and you see the predictions going here in a rather flat way. But if we follow this prediction, that means we'll end up in 2041. So that means what is some part of the prediction for Raphael? Well, probably you think about it. So, well, Michel, you told me you, you will have it forever. Yes, yeah, so that you, you we, we all, we will, we will see that um, when this, this will happen. And this will lead me to dark matter number three. So means those that are really identified or the, the dark matter, the non-identified then will, will be really clear after this year. Well, outcome of the prediction is, so to put it on the time scale, and um, let's say some other, some other aspects of this prediction, we need to be sure. First of all, it's all about crystal balls and facts, and, and it's always clear that prediction is very difficult, especially about the future. That's what Niels Bohr did, and, and many others did as well, of course, and that's difficult for me as well. Um, that's why we have to face that there are some many of uncertainties. One, another comment would be about the smartphone apps and so on. And there's a prediction here as well about the, let's say, the miniaturization in devices, in me mechanical devices and other devices means this is as well in an exponential behavior and that would mean to, to the sensors that they will become smaller and smaller in this way. So this will be prediction for, for one focus of the, of the conference as well about the portable food analysis and those sensors. Um, well, outcome of the prediction is on the time scale from my point of view means the foodome here, so the dark matter one, which means the known ones, they will be um, maybe unraveled in 2025, then the detected one, so when the sensitivity is, is, is well, big enough or is sensitive enough, the equipment will be dark matter to and identified structurally assigned means in 2041, which is still a little bit earlier than the technological singularity. So we'll see, and I would assume probably when you have the technological singularity that then everything will go rather smoothly to being identified. Well, I don't really know, but that could happen. Which means, when I look at Rafa here, and as well as um, Michel Domi, so that means now we are at the ninth, which means uh, in two years time we will have the 10th the, uh, sort of anniversary, and then in, which means in the 16th, Rafa in 2033, shortly before that, dark matter two will be unraveled. <laughs> and, and then, um, and dark matter three, then really at the 20th, then an F, uh, again, birthday of uh, anniversary of, of Rafa 2041. That means um, well, if, when I look at my time of re re retirement, that could be that I may be here present and 
face this one here, probably. I won't predict this one, what happens to me then. Um, and the uncertainty, so you, that's of course, this, this prediction is probably its, its source of many, many discussions. I have been discussing these topics, particularly the metabolites with many of my colleagues. Some told me, okay, that's less than the 500,000. Some thought, okay, it's more than 1 million and so on. So I would say, what about when you take 1 million as a basis? I calculated this as well and tell you that later. So dark matter two is about, about sensitivity. That means an ideal, ideal behavior. That means we still have the matrix interferences, um, and which means that will decrease our sensitivity. So that's an ideal case, what I have been presenting here. So it means we would need dilution then for us to, let's say, to com compensate for the interferences, which would mean we need further more sensitivity for us. Yeah, so this is the question mark of dark matter two and ionization. Is the compound ionizable or not? So we won't see those that are less ionizable for sure. So these are the limitations of the, of the platform of the equipment still we have to keep in mind, which is certain uncertainty. And, and dark matter three is really, you may have noticed that the slope of this development of the identified is the first hand it's really flat and it's not really accurate here. Yeah, so this is really a, a difficult prediction how to, well, at least I did it. So then afterwards and in rough of 2041, you, you can tell me that I have been a fool, but anyway. <laughs> this is the uncertainty calculated for the one million metabolites, which means that the, it won't affect the dark matter one only for three years, so that means in 2028 there should be dark matter uh, one unraveled, but dark matter three you see in 2060, so that's really far away here. And so this is a big, big question about here, the dark matter three, after technological um, singularity here. And well, now I opened well, the, the results of the crystal balls. And I think when we have the next Rafas, and you see, Sandy, and then we can look back whether my prediction came true or not. Thanks for your attention.